it's Joe Lyons here uh, from the Automator. And I was talking with Isaiah. We we have often have you know morning <laughs> chats. Yeah, a little discussions, right? <laughs> and Isaiah had sent me this article. Let me let me share my screen, but we'll we'll put the link in the the video here on a. Uh, on how the developers of Stack Overflow <laughs> didn't always follow best coding practices, right? And developing Stack Overflow and, and, and other stuff. Um, and uh, I, I skimmed it, I didn't read it thoroughly, but um, it, I thought, I did think it was very interesting. And it's one of those things of like, it, it, uh, it I totally get, you know, the best practices are just general rules of thumb and they don't cover, you know, your, your goals can be very different, you know, depending on what you're working on. Exactly. And that's, that's exactly what they were talking about. Like at that point when they started up, like the server was really fast. Now we have to scale up, but we don't want to lose the speed that we already achieved. Like I want to maintain that. So that was their goal. And while they were kind of like growing and growing and growing, they decided like, okay, but I don't want to lose the speed. Like I still, even though I'm growing, I don't want to lose the fact that when you enter the site, you type it and it's just there. Right. Because I believe they also <clears throat> mentioned the speed of them being able to code, right? To get stuff done also was a factor, right? They were in a hurry to get stuff done. And sometimes sometimes you have to be and you sacrifice actually the opposite side of the performance of your optimized code, right? right. Like just to get stuff done quickly. Um, and, and, and you and, and I were, and sorry, and go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, like, this is exactly something that we were talking about a little while ago. Like, um, uh, I, I, I do want to have this code out as quickly as possible, right? I, and I cannot wait. So there's a lot of things that I would have to sacrifice for that particular goal, right? Right. Yeah, the whole, you know, are you annotating? Are you, you know, are you, even the creating long variable, like, it depends on how big of a hurry you are, right? That, that changes things. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when you take a look at what they were trying to achieve, right, and this is one of the other things that we actually touched on, like, depending on the end result, you might need to pick different tools. And in the articles, they were saying, like, the fact that they needed speed informed which languages, for the programming languages, they were going to be using. And they, they, were, they were saying like, a lot of the tools that you see in there, they're written in a way that looks like C, like the C language. I saw that. And it is, yeah, and, and it is because I we didn't need the garbage collection system of C++. We didn't need these other things because that made it slower. So I, we just created functions like in C and we did everything directly in memory instead of having a, a language features like garbage collection and so on. Um, because they would make it a little bit slower. Well, and actually, because I, I, I actually read that that part, and I forget the term they used, but they said basically, it, it isn't. This isn't the term. They didn't say pausing, but basically, your your program would be running and then have to like kind of stop. And apparently, that was like it it becomes less reactive or something for a we, short time we, where we, it's we, doing some of these things. Right. We, we would, we would say like the overhead, like the overhead of a specific function. Right. But it, what you're uh, describing is when the, the program kind of like stalls, like it stalls to go ahead and do right. something else. Like for example, allocate memory. And this is something that in, and out of hotkey, we don't think about that. Right. But, um, <laughs> but right. Because out of hotkey does that for you. Like, for example, I say a variable, uh, the name of the variable is test. And now I'm going to put a text in there. Like, this is my test. Now, you don't have to know the size of the variable in AutoHotKey. It just creates the variable for you and you just put the text. In a language like C, that, that's a problem because C is going to write the text that you put directly into memory. And we need to know when that text ends. So you have to set the variable of the, uh, the, the size of that text. Um, <laughs> so, so that is something that we don't have in our key. We don't know that, right? And, and in reality, that always has to happen, correct? In reality, the difference is right. who's actually doing it. Is the, is the program yourself you're developing and doing it for you? Or, <laughs> or the language that you're actually using. Now, the thing is that then, um, after you use a variable, and in our case, you had to set the size and so on, AutoHotKey is doing that for you. 
Now, that time that our hotkey is taking to do that for you is a little bit bigger than if you had done that yourself. Later on, you have to free the memory that you used. So gotcha. after you finish with a variable, you have to free the memory so that other programs can use it. If not, you're going to have like memory leaks. Right. Again, the language has features like C++ has something called uh, garbage collection. What it does is that after some variables are not in use anymore, it goes ahead and cleans up that space for you. That takes time from your processing time because your program has to stop and check for that, right? Unless you do it yourself. If you, as soon as you finish using a variable, just go ahead and clean it, right? That's more efficient. <laughs> oh, uh, and that's what they did. That, like they, they said like, no, I'm gonna write that myself. I'm not gonna wait for the program to do it, right? Right, But and, and that's where it just gets back to, for, for the stuff we're doing, it's onesie twosie stuff. Right. The benefit gain is so tiny for the amount of time it would take to do it. But when you're doing millions or billions of these things, then the, the those time actually grow exponentially. And that's exactly what they mentioned. Like imagine doing thousand operations per second and on each operation, you have to stop and look for, you know, garbage collection. Like that's right. going to add up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, and I think we talked about this a little bit when, when this is one of the reasons why I love like functions over commands and not a hotkey and then i can you know or even an object i can access something and not even store it in a variable i can use that you know function and never Directly. even store the value that it calculated and it's just one less thing that i for me it's i forget i even had the variable in the first place and I, <laughs> yeah but yeah um very cool stuff i was gonna say that also reminded me of that uh the that file i did with the 17 ways to automate and it just gets back to there's there are different goals we all have different goals in what we're doing sometimes you need something done in a hurry sometimes you need to buy. sometimes for us not a hotkey you're considering is it is it just going to run on my computer is it going to run on multiple environments oh, that actually i control is it going to run on people's computers that aren't mine i don't even know exactly I have no clue of what they're doing you know and and then of course then there's the different technologies you're using. And if you're using like an image search versus calm or something like that radically changed. This is why it's so complicated when people talk about which, which approach should I take? I'm like, well, there's a lot of things to consider, but again, right. it's all back to your goals. Right. And this is one Jack and I were talking about um, in our podcast yesterday uh, was the um, your goals, you know, it, it's hard to understand, but your goals can actually be very different over time in what you're doing. And, and, Sometimes it's one thing, and then sometimes you do something totally different. Like I remember when I was at TI and I had learned how to use Calm, and I was doing all this stuff with web scraping with IE, you know, and, and it's beautiful. And then the problem was IE on this web, the the tool we would use for loading lists into our email database system. We no one, there was no actually there was no garbage collection, right? They would just stay adding a list, a list, list, and they would all build up where there would be hundreds or thousands of these things. And every exactly. time you try to go look, it would just take a long time to load that, that directory because there were so many things in it. The problem was you could either hit a button, say, select all and migrate them, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to have the most recent ones kept because we needed access to those. So the other option was you had to go manually click each one of these things, right? And it just took forever. And so I'm like, I was actually going, all right, now I could do this IE and I can like working through it. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I... I clicked the first cell and then I hit tab, tab, and then it like ended up on the next one and I hit the space bar and it selected it. I'm like, I put Ooh, that in an auto. This is good. You know, tab, tab, <laughs> space, tab, tab, space in a loop. And I said like, do it five times. I hit it with, you know, did them. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my five. God. I'm like, okay, this is stupid. But it's, you know, it's exactly like this, this is, this is not like the best yeah. solution. But it works for that. It works for that purpose in that point in time. I'm like, I'm not embarrassed at all, right? I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm proud. Exactly, and you that's know? what that article actually goes ahead and touches. Like, even if you don't follow the best practices, it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. So long as you're actually achieving your goal, the problem no. comes when your goal is not being met. Right? That's right. where you start having issues. Well, I'm coding in a way that makes it harder for everybody to uh, work, then that is not a good way of coding. That's all. Now, if you even, and, and people think like bad coding is just like not naming variables. Actually, sometimes naming the variables correctly might be a problem too. If you have like bunch of variables, long variables, 
and everybody's having problems with that, then that's also bad. <laughs> it's, it's not either or. It's just what works in that particular situation, right? Yeah. Yeah, imagine, imagine this, a scenario where you're using, because I know you use VS Code and I'm using <clears throat> Studio, right? And we have these long variable names. And it does VS Code, when you have a variable, auto assist type the variable name for yes. you? So uh, this is great, right? It's in like, that case, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> but what if... You're doing that, but in the real world, sometimes you don't have access to any. No, you, 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 you have like Notepad or Notepad plus yeah. plus. Yeah. Don't have like this 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 uh, uh, automatic filling the variable names. Right. You have to type that over and over again. That's a problem. Oh, and you got to spell it correctly. Like, oh my fun. god, right? Sure you didn't do this or that. I mean, imagine it is a problem. Right. So, so again, it's kind of fascinating because you always think about best practices. And yet no one really says, well, best practices are actually conditional depending on your goals. That's, right? the that's exactly why this article came out. Like, okay. and especially with programmers um, and basically with everything, people do this. They tend to go into camps. And there's the hardcore people who say, like, you have to use the one true grace, right? And there's okay. some other people yes. like, no, yes. the one true yes. grace is bad because you should put you put the, the code right. uh, blocks like yeah. this. And everybody goes into little camps, right? <laughs> yeah. And what happens is that there's these people like yeah. the best yeah. coding practices right. is that your code should be well, testable. And then yeah. there's a lot of kind of like, no, hold on. The best coding practice is that we do it fast. So... And, and, and that's the reason for this article. Like, yeah. even though there are best coding practices, it doesn't mean that you have to absolutely do that. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's you know what is funny is it's 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 actually it's uh, I'm going to bring it back to auto hotkey. It's going to sound crazy. It's it's they're they're context sensitive. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like they're situational. Yes. Like for for this in this situation, this is your best practices, right? Right. Like, we're, we're that's so the best. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Where you're doing billions of processes of data, you do want to optimize and, and take care of all the trash yourself, right? I mean, there's, it, right. And, it, and it just, it changes, so. Now, uh, I do want to kind of like, it, this whole thing reminded me of this uh, saying that says like a very good student is the one that follows the rules, right? And a very good master is the one who knows how to bend them. Awesome. <laughs> so, no. exactly. So, 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 it is right. exactly, it is exactly like that. No. You are a very good programmer if you do your best practices. Now, you are an extremely good programmer if you know when that best practice should not be used, right? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So that that actually, actually, I remember that, and I was like, yeah, that's exactly. This is exactly what they're talking about, right? <laughs> awesome, man. So, well, yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that article. Um, yeah, I'm going to include it in the oh, newsletter. Yeah. Um, I'll put up a, a, a URL here if you want to sign up for the newsletter. But um, yeah, okay. cheers. Right. Bye.